Hey guys, welcome back to fishbro.co. I'm Milan and today we're going to be talking about how to jig for kingfish. Today we're going to be going over four things. The gear you need, the lures you need, how to jig for the kingfish, the technique, and how to find them, the reefs, the sign, everything. Make sure to subscribe and like down below and turn post notifications on so you know when I bring out a next video. And follow my Facebook page and my Instagram right there. First of all, today we're going to talk about the rod and reel you want to catch these fish. Okay, the rod. You want a short rod. I would say use under six foot. The reason you want a short rod is so you can have a bit of control and leverage over the fish. You can really get in there and you can really pump him out of the reef. And also having a short rod, it decreases the chances of you snapping the rod um, while you're pulling up the fish. Now the reel. You want a reel that has at least 12 kilos of drag so it can handle these powerful fish. You also want the reel to have a smooth drag system like this one. If the drag system is not smooth and sticky and comes out like this, it puts unwanted pressure on the fish. This increases the chances of you losing the kingfish. You want to use braid as braid does not stretch like nylon. So you can have more control over the fish and you can really feel and fight the fish really smoothly. On this reel here, I have 80 pound. And on this reel here, I have 50 pound braid. You want to put between 50 and 80 pound braid on your reel. Now onto the trace. I use 100 pound black magic tough trace. This seems to do the job and you can get it for a good price. For connecting my trace to my braid, I use an FG knot. This is one of the strongest knots you can do, and once you learn it, you can do it really quick. All the knots that you see in this video, I will be doing another knot tying video very soon, so stay tuned to see that one. For connecting the trace to the jig, I use a uni knot. Uni knots are one of the strongest knots you can do, and you can use them for pretty much anything. Soft baiting, slow jigging, jigging, live baiting, all of the fishing methods. Okay, so we've got our jigging rod and reel. Remember, have a short rod and have your reel that has over 12 kilos of drag and a smooth drag system. Now the reel doesn't have to be overhead, it can also be a spinning reel. Okay, so now let's talk about the lures. Okay, so the lures we use for jigging are called jigs. Now you're going to want to bring out a few of these when you go out jigging because you lose them regularly to sharks or kingfish. When you're buying the jigs, you want between 150 grams and 400 grams. I usually buy 200 to 300 gram jigs. Most of my jigs are 300 gram, because for me that seems to cover most depths. If you're fishing at a spot and your jigs are not getting to the bottom or they're drifting out the back of the boat, you want to up the size of your jigs. This usually happens because of current changes, tide changes, all that kind of stuff. So make sure to bring different size jigs out. I like to add these squid skirts on the end of my jigs. This can sometimes increase the chances of you hooking up on a kingfish. These squid skirts come in many sizes and colours and you can get them from pretty much any fishing store. I also add these um, flasher kind of things on the back. This also helps to increase your chances of hooking up on a kingfish. Now you'll see some of these jigs have this lumo strip on the side. These jigs glow in the dark. This also helps increase the chances of you hooking up on a kingfish because the kingfish can see it glowing. Now, different jigs have different actions. This one's a flutter jig. This will do a flutter action underwater. And this one's a straight runner. It'll just go straight down and up. My favorite color of jig is pink. I seem to hook up mostly on pink. Now you don't just catch kingfish on these jigs. I've caught snapper, kawai, trevally, and heaps of reef species on this jig. These flutter jigs have caught me many snapper in the past. The snapper just seem to love them. If you're out there jigging and you're not hooking up on kingfish, maybe try and change your shape, your jig weight, or your color of your jig. This can make a huge difference. Okay, we've got our rod and reel, we've got our lures, but now we need to know how to actually jig. I use a method of jigging called mechanical jigging. Mechanical jigging is when you lift the rod up and down while winding. Yeah, brother. Boy, yeah, boy. Boy. We're out here at Little Barrier. Yeah, 
Here's a quick video on how to do it. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to jig. The method I use is called mechanical jigging, okay? So first, first step, you just want to move the rod up and down like this. And now second step, you want to add a wind into it, so like this. So when I have my rod up here, I have the handle up here, and I bring it down and bring the handle down. So I'm just going up, down, up, down, up, down. And once you get faster at it, it shouldn't just look like that. And that's how you want to be jigging for those kingfish. Yep, cool. Under the water, the kingfish think this is a bait fish. The kingfish will go crazy for it and eat the whole jig whole. Usually, the hook will hook in the side of the kingfish's mouth. When you're jigging for kingfish and you feel a bite, don't stop jigging. Keep jigging through the bite. Make sure you really have the fish on. When you hook the fish, you want to try and pump him out of the reef and get as much line back on the reel as possible before the kingfish breaks you off. If there's sharks in the area, you're going to want to try and get the kingfish in as fast as possible before those sharks get it. Here's a video of me getting the fish out of the reef. Okay, so we've got the gear, we've got the lures, we know how to jig, but how are we going to find the fish? You want to go to reefs. You want to study the fishing charts looking for these reefs. You will see lots of lines in one area and you will see the depth of the water come up. Okay, so I'm going to show you an example of what to look out for. This is quite a good example here. See, we've got a 38 meter mark here and then it goes all the way up to 11. This is a really good spot to jig. Now you want to jig on these lines because this is where the depth goes straight up. Because we can see here, that's a 20, 20 meters in, it goes up to 11. So you want to be jigging on those lines. This is quite a good example. If you see this, you want to go here and you want to jig here. When you're at these reefs, you want to look for the bait fish. You want to look for this on your sounder. This is a big school of bait fish. The kingfish should be there. You just need to drop your jig straight through them. What time should you get to these reefs? I would recommend you get there either at sunrise or at sunset. This is because the fish feed at this time. You can catch kingfish out of these times, but you're more likely to catch them at either sunset or sunrise. Okay, so you know everything you need to know about catching kingfish. So remember, have a short rod, have a reel that has at least 12 kilos of drag and a smooth drag system, Bring multiple jigs out ranging from 150 grams to 400 grams. And once you've got all that, go to a reef at either sunset or sunrise. And find the bait fish. So, that was how to catch kingfish. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe down below to see more videos like this. I also do fishing videos about us going out and having adventures and we go out jigging at reefs. All the knots you saw in this video, I will be doing another video on how to tie these knots. So be sure to subscribe so you see when those come out. If you have any questions, put it in the comments down below. Or you could go to my Instagram or Facebook page right there to ask me any questions. I also post cool videos and photos on those pages. So make sure to follow them and check them out. I hope you guys enjoyed that video and I'll see you on the next one.